After a series of unfortunate events, an old lady is accidentally abandoned at sea in 1886. Here's what the papers had to say. The smack Columbine started from Grootness Harbor on Saturday morning from Lurwick. A heavy sea was running, and when about four miles out, the skipper, James Jameson, was knocked overboard. Not long after setting sail, they were hit by a storm. The captain goes overboard, leaving two sailors left, who now have a decision to make. Do they stay on board, or do they attempt to rescue their captain? The two other men immediately lowered a small boat and attempted to save their companion, leaving no one on board but a female passenger. They failed to save the drowning man, who sank before they could reach him. And by the time they turn back, the ship is already being carried away by the storm. And these guys are in a rowboat. There's no way they could catch him. So they did the only thing they could do and headed back for land. But seriously, what were the sailors supposed to do? I mean, hindsight is 2020, and they obviously chose wrong. But in the moment, do you leave the man to his fate, or you, do you take the risk? The woman, who was alone on board, is stated to have been below at the time. It is thus possible she may not have come to a knowledge of her critical position until some hours afterwards. The sailors make it to shore, they raise the alarm, a steamer is sent out to search, but they don't find anything. And then after two days, they call it off, because they figure it's hopeless. And then towards the end of the article, we get one last gut punch from one of the sailors, who says he thought the woman on board knew something had happened, because he heard her screaming. The woman's name was Elizabeth Betty Mowat from Shetland, Scotland, 60 years old, unmarried, on her way to visit her sister, sell a bit of knitting, and visit the doctor. And that was the end. Of the first half of the story, ignore the pit stains, this story's got me sweating. She lives. What should have been a two to three hour journey of about 20 miles to Lurwick ends up being a nine day voyage of over 300 miles. She's frail, she's seasick, weak from the experience, living off a bottle of milk and two biscuits until she runs out of those on the fourth day. At which point, she starts licking the condensation off the windows to survive. Until the ninth day, she pokes her head out to find the ship has run aground on a island off the Norwegian coast called Lipsoia. Lipsoia? I think that's how the Norwegians might say it. And with the help of the locals, she's returned to health and home. She receives a letter and 20 pounds from Queen Victoria, and even becomes a bit of a celebrity with requests to make appearances. But no, no, no. Betty is perfectly content to go back to her cottage and resume life as if nothing had happened. And carries on for another 32 years until passing away at the age of 93 in 1918. And interestingly enough, her own father was lost at sea when she was only six months old. And I'm not a superstitious person, but maybe she got a little bit of help. That's it for this one. Thanks for hanging out and consider coming back again. Peace.